Our dear students, faculty, staff, and online worshipers, welcome to, to the, the second session of our week, week of prayer program with the theme, Embrace, Who Am I That, that God cares? cares? Yes, it is definitely a great feeling seeing all of you to this afternoon to join us in our program. This morning, Pastor Kenroy talked about the topic, Born with a Purpose. Indeed. His message taught us that every human was born to do something. Something that will create a positive impact in the world. You know, Hans, we have just started this week-long week of prayer, but we have already felt the presence of the Holy Spirit through the powerful messages this morning. We learned about the important insights that can guide us through understanding our purpose in life. And since we've been talking a lot about purposes, I would like to ask you, Hans, what is your purpose in life? Well, you know, Kath, before the message earlier, I thought I was already doing my calling and my purpose in life. But it turns out I am wrong. I, have may, I may have found my calling in life, but I am not really sure what is my purpose. What is God's purpose in my life? Well, you know, Hans, the great way to start understanding your purpose in life is to ask our God. That is a great way to start understanding your purpose in life as our purpose is best understood by our Creator, Christ, who can answer all the questions and doubts about our existence here on earth. Amen. Indeed, Kath. Now, I want to ask you, how about you? What do you think is your purpose in your life? Mm, you know, Hans, that is really a simple question if we, can, if we will look at it. But in reality, it is very hard to answer. But uh, as Pastor said earlier, that our existence is a solution to life's problems. We are not a problem looking for a solution, but rather a solution looking for an ant looking for a problem. Is that right, brothers and sisters? I am soon to be a nurse, and it is very heartwarming to know that God has called me to be a solution to my future patients' problems. God's purpose in my life is to be a vessel of hope, a reflection of God's love for the people in need of God's warm embrace. Amen to that. Soon to be a nurse, God. Amen. You know, earlier also, there are some points that captured my heart. Our speaker said that God already knew us even before we were born. Even before we are conceived, God already knows what we will be doing and has set a purpose in our lives. Amen to that. One of the points that I have also learned is that God has set us apart from we were apart before we were even born and has appointed us and called us to do His will. Yes, that is true. Truly, the message we've heard earlier is a blessing that we can use to fully discern the purpose God gave us in our lives. And it's also a beautiful reminder to us that we are not here by chance, Amen. but because God chose us to be wherever you are, wherever we are. You are unique and different. You are special and spectacular. You are exceptional and incomparable. We are born with a unique purpose in this world. Amen. What a very promising words to hear. We are special and spectacular. Hans, you are exceptional and incomparable. Amen? Amen. Okay. Though God has given us unique purpose that set us apart from the others, God has still given us a choice to do His plan for us. We just have to be willing to be submissive and surrender our purpose in His hand. We also must allow God to lead us in that purpose. Precisely, Kath. We may be answering the right calling, but we should also fulfill the right purpose God has planned for us. Now, Kath, this afternoon, we will hear another comforting and inspiring message from our speaker entitled, Created to Serve which will tell us why God created us. If we were born with a purpose, then what exactly is that purpose? That is a very interesting question. What is that purpose and what is our duty as God's instruments in this world? So stay tuned with us 
as we meditate on God's word and let us find together the answer for these questions. Now, before we proceed to, the pro to our program, we have a few announcements. First is, if you are interested in buying our Week of Prayer t-shirt, you can order now by scanning the QR code you will be seeing on, your, on the screen, or you can visit the Campus Youth Ministries Facebook page. Second, we are inviting you to like and follow our CYM social media platforms. For Facebook, look for Campus Youth Ministry Adventist University of the Philippines. And for IG, it is at AUP underscore CYM. Again, for Facebook, as flashed on our big screen, look for, CYM, for Campus Youth Ministries Adventist University of the Philippines. And for IG, it is at AUP underscore CYM. And for some reminders, after the program, please remain seated until the appeal song is finished. And if you have prayer request, feel free to drop it on the bowls at the lobby of PIC. Now, we are inviting all of you to divert your attention and focus on the message we will be hearing today. Let us refrain from doing anything that can be a distraction for us. Let us open our hearts and minds as we explore what it truly means to be created to serve. And hopefully, we all can feel the warm embrace of God this afternoon. Once again, we welcome you with open hearts and minds to our week of prayer. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon and God, God bless us all. Good afternoon, everyone. For our opening song, our theme song, let us all rise and sing, My Savior Cares. Does Jesus care?
living and studying here in AUP was never been easy. Especially when we are facing a lot of problems or dealing with a lot of difficulties in our lives. Specifically, when we are emotionally and mentally unstable. It's hard to do anything, even the simplest things, like going out of bed, studying, reviewing, or even doing your lab while you're literally emotionally unstable is very hard. Some of us, or maybe most of us, may have experienced the lowest point in our lives, that we feel like we finally hit our rock bottom and lost our motivation and inspiration in our lives. I experienced it too. But I had this one friend, not just an ordinary friend, a special friend, my best friend. This person was my prayer buddy. We always pray together, and we never stop praying for one another. Even on the phone, we would always call and pray for one another. We would stop during 7-7 and pray for one another. Whenever we are sad, we are stressed, we are anxious, or whenever we are happy, we would always pray for one another. And after we pray, everything seems to be just doing fine. And I don't even know why. When you pray for someone, you feel blessed. You find peace, you find joy and hope. That is why it is always important to pray together. May it be with your family, your friend, your loved one, or even a stranger. So to that one friend of mine that helped me overcome my problems, my mom, my dad, my sister, my Lola, who patiently, nonstop prayed for me, thank you. And I thank God for, for giving me you. So this afternoon, in this week of prayer, I hope and I pray that you would be able to pray for someone or with someone. And that someone will also pray for you. May it be your family, your friend, your teacher, or even your seatmate here today. If you're shy with one another, still pray. Even silently, pray for them. Maybe the person that you are sitting with today may have a lot of difficulties and problems in their hearts and in their lives. Remember that one simple prayer, one simple prayer will always make a difference. So this afternoon, I encourage you to join our daily united prayer before and after our week of prayer service. At 6.30 and 9 o'clock in the morning and 3.30 and 6 o'clock, in the afternoon or evening. As we start our seasons of prayer, may we always cherish the gift of prayer, the opportunity to talk to our God, our Creator, our loving and our dearest friend, Jesus Christ, that would always listen to us. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy week of prayer. For seasons of prayer, a prayer focus this afternoon is to reflect ways on how you serve God and others selflessly, and seeking opportunities to use your gifts and talents to greater good. Here's the flow of our week of prayer this afternoon. To begin, the praise team will sing short chorus, and after that, the congregation will be given two minutes for individual prayer or by partner. Lastly, 
I will conclude the prayer to reflect ways on how you serve God and others selflessly and seeking opportunities to use your gifts and talent for greater good. And the praise team will sing to end the prayer time. Those who are able, let's kneel. Our great and kind Heavenly Father, as we come before you in prayer, we humbly seek your guidance and grace to reflect on the ways in which we can serve you and, uh, and others selflessly. Lord, grant us the wisdom to recognize the needs of those around us and the compassion to respond with love and kindness. Help us, O oh Lord, to see the opportunities to use the gifts and talents you have bestowed upon us. May we use these gifts not for personal gain, but as instruments of your will, to uplift, to uplift and support those in need. Lord, grant us the strength and courage to step out of a comfort zone and make a difference in the lives of others. Help us, O oh God, to be a beacon of light in a world filled with darkness, spreading hope and joy wherever we go. Guide us in the path of humility and service so that we may follow the footsteps of your Son, Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. May your actions reflect your love and grace bringing glory to your name. In your holy and precious name, I pray. Amen. Sweet love.
Magandang hapon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Are you happy to be in the presence of God? Are you happy to know that God is in love with you? Indeed, God has been gracious to us. He has brought us to another session where we can worship his high and holy name. We are to count ourselves privileged to be in the land of the living because there are many persons who have started today but they are not in the land of the living because some way, somehow death came by and snatched their lives and because we, you and I are in the land of the living we ought to be grateful amidst the challenges as students that we face faculty, staff, administrators that we all face on a day-to-day -day basis that just to be alive is a lot to give God thanks for because where there is life there is hope and so I'm happy that you have made the sacrifice to be here for our second session there are two questions quickly that I'm going to ask based on the sermon uh, this morning. And I have two lovely gifts for two persons who will answer the question. Are, are we together? Are we together? Okay, wonderful. Uh, the first question, I'm so sorry it's not on the screen, but um, you can follow with me. Can anybody tell me what was the scripture text that the sermon was based on this morning? I'll give you three options. A, Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. B, Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 4 and 5. And C, Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Can anybody, just quickly, just raise your hand? Yes? Yes, the, the young lady at the back, uh, at the side there. Uh, quickly. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Verses 4 and 5, is that correct? Is that correct? Oh, yes, it is. Uh, could you just... Uh, could you... Yeah, you, you, you could come and take it. Yes, my second question... Thank you. Thank you very much. My second question, quickly, is true or false? Do you still do true and false in school? Okay, wonderful. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing that you have this uh, uh, questions like this in, 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 in school, right? Because you only have two options. If it's not false, it's true. And if it's not true, it's false, right? Uh, okay, wonderful. Uh, the, three points, the three points of the sermon this morning were God knew you before he formed you. God set you apart before you were born. God appointed you. True or false yes true true you're sure true or false true okay okay wonderful uh, you are correct is he correct <laughs> give him give them a round of applause Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, at one point he was wondering if he should change his, his answer. But as students, you've got to be confident. 
confident, sorry, uh, in your answers. And uh, the best way to be confident in your answers is to study hard. Are we together? But there's a difference between studying hard and studying wisely. Right? You can study all day long and you still have not covered the information that you need to take an exam. So it's not just to study hard, but to study wisely. All right? Uh, I know this is not a lecture, so let me get into the Word of God. If you have your Bibles uh, with you, I invite you to turn with me to the book of Genesis. And we go to the first chapter, Genesis chapter 1, and we consider uh, a few verses beginning in verse 27, Genesis chapter 1. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. You can follow in whatever version you have. My version reads this way. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Him, sorry. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said that, Behold, I have given you every plant healing seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. Simple subject for the next few minutes created to serve the steward in the master's estate created to serve the steward in the master's estate your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed our God and our heavenly father one more time Lord I stand between you and your people as an instrument in your hands like Isaiah, Lord, I pray that you will take a live coal from your altar and place it upon my lips so that the words that are spoken here will not be mine, but that they'll be yours. Father, I pray that the sermon will not get in the way of the message, nor this preacher stand in the way of the cross, but may your name be glorified. May you alone, Lord, be lifted up and be praised. And we ask that the devil will be horrified in Jesus' name. Created to serve the steward in the master's estate. In the DNA of humanity is the imprint of service to God. Our existence demands that we give service to a holy God who created us in the first place. We are called to be stewards in the master's vineyard. Stewardship is often conceptualized around the concept of money or more specifically how you spend the money that God has given you. As such, or consequently, the matter of tithing normally comes to bear as the most important. Nevertheless, stewardship is far more than money. It is far more than tithing. Stewardship has to do with the whole human being, every aspect of your life. A stewardship, first and foremost, is to acknowledge the master of the estate and the relationship the steward needs to have with the master in order to effectively take care of the estate. The master is God. The steward is humanity, and the estate is whatever God has given to you to take care of. 
Therefore, stewardship has three dimensions. The master, the steward, and the estate. There are two points that I'm going to share with you this afternoon. Two points, and then I'll take my seat. The first one, created in his image. The second, finding your gifts in the service of the Lord. Created in his image. After God created the world, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. The meaning of image here in Genesis has always been a debate. I want you to listen to me very carefully. I'm going to teach a little bit right now before I begin to preach. The meaning of image here in Genesis has always been a debate. Some Bible students say that the image of God has to do with sharing certain qualities with God. Both God, for example, both God and people have an intellect, emotions, and, and will. Number two, some believe that the image of God has to do with eternal, eternal conduct, how humans behave. Or three, moral religious perfection. And the list goes on. However, a closer look at the passage reveals that the image of God seems to be a representative of something or someone. Humanity is created in God's image in order to represent him on earth or in his estate. So the prefix in, and I'm happy I'm speaking to university students, so I want, I want your brain now, I want your brain. Are we together? Are we together? I want to reason as we try to understand God's word. The prefix in does not always mean location, right? If I say put the dish in the sink, I am telling you where to put the dish, which is location. Are we together? I know you come to AUP, you're bright students, right? Aren't you bright students? Okay, amen. Wonderful. It can mean result. If I say the dish is broken in pieces, I am not speaking of location. I'm speaking of the result of the broken dish. The dish, the, sorry, the prefix in can also mean identity, right? I do studies in chemistry, in religion, I am not speaking about where I do studies, but I'm identifying what I do studies in. On this basis, it can be read, the statement, let us make man in our image, can be understood this way, let us make man as our image. The word that is used in Hebrew to translate as in is the Hebrew preposition be, which can also be translated as. It is translated uh, as, in Exodus chapter 6, verse 3, the prefix be is read that way, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I appeared as, I appeared be El Shaddai, as El Shaddai. And so, brothers and sisters, in the time of the Bible, biblical events, a king would set up an image or a statue in places where he could not be. So when a king conquers a place, he would set up a statue. So when the people see the statue, they would know that it represents the king. In the New Testament, Jesus is also called the image of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, In whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelieving so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, 
where believers are also associated with the image, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as from the Lord, the Spirit. So in other words, we are the image of God. We are that representative we are the representatives here on this earth. When God created man, God created man to represent him on this earth. Exodus 20 tells us that we should not make any graven what? Image of any likeness in heaven or in earth. In other words, God should not be depicted by things. Why? Because God has created humanity to represent him. When you're walking with Jesus, when somebody see you, they must see Jesus through you. You cannot be Jesus, but you can reflect Jesus. The image of God both pertains to our existence and our doing. We exist to represent God here on earth. We are expected to represent him. Humanity is given a high status in the creation story. We are the only creature that is created in God's image to represent God on earth. We have a privileged position, a royal position in God's creation. Representing God in this estate is what we have been called to do. When God created humanity, he created them male and female as his image. God caused both male and female to represent him. Ellen White tells us in Evangelism 469, she says, When a great and decisive work is to be done, God chooses men and women to to do this work and it will see the loss if the talents of both are not combined. God has called you to do a great work. This morning we talk about the fact that we all were created with a, were created with a purpose. We're created to do something. We're created as a solution for a problem. But understand that we are called to be servants in God's service. We are called to share in this great salvation a process we are called to share with Jesus. Brothers and sisters, it does not matter where you are. It does not matter whether you are young or old. We all have a work to do in the master's estate. It does not matter whether you are black or white or brown or you are not brown. It doesn't matter whether you are American or Africans, whether you're Filipinos or Chinese, whatever nationality you are, we all have a work to do, whether you are educated or uneducated, whether you are in first form, whether you are in first year, a freshman, or you're about to graduate, whether you are waiting to get that degree or you're just starting, it doesn't matter the position that you have in life, there is a start for which you have been called to and when man sin man marred the marred the image of God man marred that image because sin marred us but thank God that way back at the cross of Calvary Jesus laid prostrate so that you and I can be connected so that we can let our light shine so that we can represent him so the image can shine forth so we can be like him because God has called us to be like him. We can't be God and we don't need to try to be God because God is in a different realm. He is not he is divine and we are humans but we can share in his divinity because if you take on Christ if you take on Christ it is humanity wrapped up with divinity. It's not that you become divine, but you become a child of Almighty God. Whether you are from the city or the province, you have a work to do. Whether you are tall 
or you are short, whether you are fat or you are slim, we all have a work to do. I hear Psalm 150 says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Oh, brothers and sisters, Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The only way your light can shine before men is if you have surrendered your life to the the creator God. The only way you can bear that image, the only way you can the only way you can represent God the way he wants you to represent him is if you have stopped at Calvary and you have washed I hear the songwriter says what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me white as snow? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Listen to me uh, students understand uh, that we have come to a time you know we have come to a play I uh, come to a time in our world when men and women need Jesus more than ever when men and women need to recognize uh, uh, that the best friend to have uh, is a uh, Jesus the best company to be in is a uh, Jesus A friend who sticks closer than a brother. A friend who journey, who journeys with you into your problems and give you a solution out of them. His name is a Jesus. That is the God that we are called to represent. We are called to let our light shine for Jesus. Uh, but if you notice with me in Genesis, the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply. Genesis 1.28 notes, God bless them to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. God bestows blessing upon humanity. This blessing is to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Adam and Eve were to have lots of children in order to fill the earth. Are you with the preacher today? This command to fill the earth was applicable at creation when the earth was empty. Today we are called to fill the earth with the love of Jesus to tell the world about Jesus. John chapter 12 verse, th verse 32 says, If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And we are called to lift up Jesus. We are called to make him known to others. But you can't make him known to others if you don't know him yourself. You can't tell people about him if you don't know him. And the truth is we are living in a world where so many of us know about him but don't know him there's a difference you can have all the knowledge you have of the Bible but if you don't know the person of the Bible if you don't know the God who came down into nothing spoke into nothing and created man from the dust of the from the dust created man from the dust of the earth and breathed into the nostrils of man if you don't know uh, the God who uh, came and spoke this world into existence. Uh, your knowledge is useless. The question is, do you lift up your status, your positions and possessions instead of Jesus? Uh, do you lift up your jobs, your jewels, your joys instead of Jesus? Uh, do you lift up your fames, your fortunes, your family instead of Jesus? Do you lift up your grades, your goals, your garments instead of Jesus? Uh, what do you find yourself lifting up? Are you lifting up Jesus? We are called to exalt Jesus and his love. We are called to be ambassadors of Christ. God calls us to fill the estate by exalting Christ. 
Joyce Ellen White uh, tells us in manuscript 27, 1891, letter 174, 1896, she says, lift up Jesus, the man of Calvary, lift him up in prayer, lift him up in song, lift him up, the man of Calvary, higher and still higher, and let your message be, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Brothers and sisters, God is looking, students, staff, faculty, and administrators, God is looking for a group of people who will lift up Jesus, not just when everything is going well, but lift him up when things are not going well. We must multiply the love of Jesus by sharing his love with others. If we really believe that we were created in his image, then we need to represent him in the things we do and say. We must live like he wants us to live. We must serve him in his way, not ours, because God loves us, because God loves us, because God loves us. Understand, brothers and sisters, that because God loves us, because God has called us, we have a duty, we have a duty to perform, to lift up Jesus. His love for us goes beyond the boundaries of time. The Bible tells us that Adam and Eve were to have dominion over every living thing on the earth. In other words, to have dominion is to take care, is to care for the estate. To care for God's estate is to give service to it. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15 says, Then the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. Uh, the Hebrew words for tend and keep are aved and shamar, to serve and to guard. These words are the common words that are used to describe uh, the work of the priestly service in the sanctuary. As such, Adam is put in the garden to serve, not to relax, not to exalt himself, but to serve. Our responsibilities as humans uh, today is to serve in God's estate, to exercise our gifts, our talents, our abilities in the service of God. We are not called to gossip but to service. We are not called to be spectators in this life. We are not called to be served but to serve. We are not called to sit and do nothing but to serve. Service is what every human is called to as students. You have a responsibility to learn to do what it takes to fulfill the requirements of your degree. God has given you an some privilege to learn and to acquire an education that will enable you to be proficient in his services as you come through the gates every morning to this school to this campus as you enter your classroom always remember that it's a privilege it's not just because you have paid the tuition it's not just because your mother is rich or your father is rich it's not just because somebody has paid for you or you have paid for yourself but it's a privilege that God has afforded unto you because God uh, God is working on you God is fixing you up God is getting you qualified God is getting you positioned God is making sure that you are ready for what's waiting on you and that's why do not take a subject for granted because as university students and sometimes uh, we feel that some of the minors, uh, the, the minor subjects, those in our minors uh, or the general courses, we say gen ed. In other words, brothers and sisters, uh, you, sometimes we feel that these courses uh, are not so useful because I'm studying 
biology that's my major but I'm doing a, a Christian subject and that's ain't that's ain't uh, uh, that's not important but let me tell you it is important everything that you do in class is important you may not see it today you may not understand it today but when you leave the corridors of AUP when you leave the corridors of AUP and get out in the work world you will understand that having knowledge of uh, of, uh, having knowledge of certain things and having a broad knowledge of life, uh, you will understand uh, that you need these things because sometimes it's not your qualification that position you, uh, uh, but it's just a conversation. How can you have a conversation if you're not knowledgeable about what the topic of discussion is about? Uh, so don't take it for granted uh, because if God places it before you, uh, it's because God God saw your future long before your grandmother met your grandfather. And so he positioned, he positioned you uh, so that you can uh, be ready. So that you can uh, be ready for what's waiting on you. So don't take those genus, uh, general courses lightly. Right? Some of you might meet your husband because... You took your general courses seriously. Oh, you're silent on me here. Some of you might meet your wives because you took those general courses seriously. Because it was just a conversation that created an interest. But had you had no knowledge of the topic you wouldn't be able to converse. Are we together? As students, you have a responsibility to learn. God has given you an awesome privilege. Take hold of this opportunity. See it as God's assignment for you at this stage of your life. Oh, can I just talk to the teachers for a moment? If you're a teacher... Your task, your task is to equip students to be ready to take on the challenges of life. When a student sits in your class, it is an awesome privilege for you as a teacher. When a student sits before you, you don't know the student's future. You could be teaching the next president of this country. You don't know. You could be teaching the next general conference president. You don't know. You could be teaching the next president or, or, or a future president of this institution you don't know the future when somebody sits before you it ought to be an awesome privilege because you never know what the future of this person is and even if you know it still ought to be an awesome privilege it is not a right it's a privilege to be given this opportunity to play a vital part of a human's life. Uh, uh, teachers, you may never know the future of your students. You may never know where they're going to end up. But if you can play a vital part, let me tell you something. Uh, God could have chosen other people to be teachers, uh, but he chose you. Uh, it's not because you're more qualified. It's not because you know somebody, but it's because of the grace of Almighty God. Because he looked uh, look in time and he he recognize uh, that you ought to be here to speak a word uh, so that somebody can be ready for what's waiting on them. Take care of the vineyard God has given you. Created to serve. Make sure that you understand why you are where you are. Finding your gifts in the service of the Lord. Because if you're going to serve, you've got to know what's, what is your gift. God created all of us with gifts and talents to be a blessing to him in his estate. There's a work for all to do they are gifts for everyone. Romans chapter 12 verses 6 to 8 says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. 
let us use them if prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith our ministry let us use it in our ministering he who teaches in teaching Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 says and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers Paul lets us know that we do not all receive the same gifts they are different according to the grace that is given to us it means that we all receive gifts in some places there are some people who are not satisfied with their gifts you know in this world sometimes we are very uh, coveted of others of other of other persons gifts but let me tell you something you were uniquely formed and God gave you gifts uh, don't worry about the person who had uh, the persons who have gifts that you would have wanted focus on your gifts and work on them because there is something that God has in store for you to do and unless you are ready you will not be able to do that which God has called you to do Brothers and sisters, some people get obsessed with life on this side of Jordan. That they no longer have an urgency to understand the value of developing their gifts. But as a steward, we ought not to covet others, but to be grateful to God for having given us gifts for his service. Gifts are not to make us look good, but to make God look good in the eyes of lost people. Gifts are not to make us great, but to exalt Jesus. Gifts are not for competition, but for worshiping God. Gifts are not so much for the stage, but, for, but to save lives. Gifts are not for beauty, but for the saving of lost souls. For Jesus, gifts are not for us. It is for the equipping and the edifying of the body of Christ, the saints of Christ. If you are a medical student, your task is to save lives. If you are a computer major or a mechanical engineer student, your task is to make life much easier for others. If you are a social worker student, your task is to care for others. If you are a religious student your task is to feed God's sheep with the gospel of salvation whatever is your field of study there are and at there attach an important and valuable task for you to carry out there is something for you to do in the master's vineyard there is a something for you to do special something special before you leave this world before you leave this place called earth there is something for you to do there is something for me to do and that's why wherever God places us now we ought to take full advantage of it wherever God places us now because our life is seasonal our life is a journey today we are right here as students but tomorrow you are workers out there today you are students tomorrow you are administrators uh, today you are a medical medical students but tomorrow you are doctors today you are today you are uh, today 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 you are a religion major but tomorrow you are a pastor in other words life is a journey and because life is a journey you got to keep walking you got to keep moving you got to keep taking advantage of that which God has given you because one of these days where you spend your life you will have to give an account Paul tells us in Ephesians as I close the sermon we should walk worthy of the calling which which with which we were called to walk worthy is to be found using the gifts our gifts for God what God has called us to it is to have our gifts in the service of the Lord to walk worthy of our calling is to do what God 
has called us to do. It is to be of service to God in his estate. It is not our gift. It is his gift. We use it to glorify him, to praise him, to exalt him. We are called. We are called to praise him. We are called to glorify him with the gifts that he has given us. The ultimate goal is to get to know Jesus better. And so Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 to 2 says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us. Not given himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God for sweet smelling aroma. Galatians chapter 2 verse 21 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Listen to what Paul says in, in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. He says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, students, staff, faculty, and administrators, our greatest example of who a steward is, is Jesus. Our greatest example is Jesus. When man sinned, Jesus and his father have already agreed to save mankind. Jesus descended the stairways of heaven, born in a manger, walked the dusty roads of Palestine. Jesus, Jesus, one day, brothers and sisters, dead backed up Jesus to Calvary. One day dead fell in the arms of Jesus. One day dead stopped the heart of Jesus. One day dead held the feet of Jesus. But I'm so glad, I'm so glad that death did not plug the ears of Jesus. Because early Sunday morning, my Jesus got up from the grave with all power in his hands. And because he got up from the grave, somebody today can get up from a place are feeling down and out uh, because he got up somebody who has been buried people have told you that you will never make it that you will never rise because Jesus rose from the grave you can rise uh, and you can stand up and know that you are valuable know that you are count know that uh, you have a purpose in this world know that God ain't finished with you yet uh, uh, some people may have finished with you uh, uh, you may have lost a relationship uh, and the uh, boy may have told you that he finished with you. Your girlfriend may have told you that she finished with you. But I know somebody who has not yet finished with you. Because Jeremiah says we're a pot. The pot in the potter's hand. Ezekiel says the pot, Jeremiah, the pot in the potter's hand. The pot is defective. The pot is marred. But it cannot talk to somebody. If you're in the potter's hand, you're at the right place. You may be marred. You may being perfect but if you're in the potter's hand the potter is working on you and it does not matter what others say about you as long as you are in the potter's hand that's where I want to be this evening that's where I want to be this evening in the potter's hand marred but in the potter's hand because if you're going to serve you got to be broken in the potter's hand if you're going to serve you got to be in the hands of the maker who can make you into what he wants you to be as my brother sings I invite you to contemplate on the fact that God has created you to serve. The question is, what service are you given? Traveled far and wide 
searching for comfort without your light chasing the pleasures in the world i had built left me broken in my guilt i've come to see that the best for me lies in your embrace so here i am lord make me and you to live for your glory your glory alone you are my strength my solid ground you are true you are there without doubt through the storms of life in the darkest days when i've gone astray you say my child you're not alone do not be afraid for you are my own now that i'm home where i belong i know i am restored surrounded by your love and wrapped in your grace i am now To live for your glory, your glory alone. You are my strength, my solid ground. You are true, you are there without doubt. Not the helpless, nor the reckless is beyond the reach of your love. You say, my child you're not alone do not be afraid for you are my own do not be afraid for you Stand. Do not be afraid because you are not alone. Created to serve, a steward in the master's vineyard. Today, as you sat and you listened, God speaking to your heart that your life works more than what others may think and that each of us from the pulpit to the pew have a work to do in the master's vineyard I invite you to keep pondering this as you bow your heads as we pray a God a heavenly father we are grateful Lord that you are the great potter we are the marred pot in the potter's hand defective we are grateful to know Lord that because there is work to be done in the master's vineyard and because we are in your hands we are confident that you will make us into whatever shape that you desire of us to be in and today Lord as your children have listened recognize 
that they were created, that we all were created to serve. Lord, may we be found as servants in your vineyard. So Lord, if there is one person here who has not yet surrendered his or her life to you, if there is one person who has not yet take hold of your righteousness that you have made available, I pray today that you will speak to that heart. I pray, O oh God, that you will trouble that person's conscience. And I pray that you will lead this person to surrender totally to you. For the man who walks with God, the woman who walks with God, does not walk alone. We praise you and we tell you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Here I am, Lord, make me and you to live for your glory, your glory alone. You are my strength, my solid ground. You are true, you are there without doubt. Not the helpless, nor the reckless is beyond the reach of your love. You say, my child, you're not alone. Do not be afraid, for you are my own. Do not be afraid, for you are my own.